Welcome everybody to the Best Backpacking Gear Awards of 2022 and into 2023. So just as a prerequisite, all of this best backpacking gear is what I consider to be the best backpacking gear. So you may consider something else to be the best backpacking gear. So don't come screaming and yelling at me in the comments. Uh, this is just gear that I've used over the past few years. So this isn't even like just 2022. Some of this is a little bit older. Some of it did come out in 2022, but it's what I think is the best on the market and it's not based on price. So this is legitimately what is the best. If you are interested in like budget type stuff, there's a couple things that we'll talk through as far as budget stuff goes, but then I'm also gonna list a video in the description below where you can find what I think is the biggest bang for your buck budget backpacking gear out there. Emmett, say that 10 times fast. I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> I don't embarrass myself. <laughs> okay, the first category and how I'm choosing how the categories go is it's gonna be in the order of kind of how I would actually pack a backpack really, but this is literally definitive. So this is pretty much everything <laughs> I could possibly think of when it comes to backpacking gear, stuff that you would be taking out on trail. And then some of the categories will have multiple items in them because it was really difficult to decide what actually was gonna be the best piece of gear. And some of the pieces of gear fit different scenarios for me that in the past year or two. So um, I'm gonna list a couple of different gear items for each category. All right, the first category is best backpack. For the longest time, for years, literally, I've had this here, this is the Hyperlite Mountain Gear uh, South, well actually this is the Junction, I think. They, they've got like, three backpacks that are almost identical, only the outside of the backpack makes a little bit of a difference. This has been my favorite backpack, until, and I hate to say that because this is still probably, it's this is probably still my favorite, it could be. It's, it's gonna be one of those things again, I'm sorry, I'm just not gonna be able to decide yet, and I'll tell you why, because I've got another backpack here that I wore this year that literally blew my mind when I put it on. I was like, holy cow, this is epic. The best backpack, 2022 for me, Z-Packs, Arc Hall, the 70 liter version for this backpack. Now, this is why I say I'm not sure because I'm gonna be totally real with you. I only wore this for like maybe 20 miles on trail, but it was packed out with winter gear and um, it was the most comfortable ultralight because I like ultralight backpacks. For me, in 2022, it was way more comfortable than the Hyperlite, packed out with the same amount of gear. And this thing weighs, I wanna say, close to 10 ounces less than the Hyperlite backpack. That does come with some drawbacks, though, because this backpack is going to be a little bit less durable. So you're gonna have to kind of consider that. But I have used this backpack in the past, several years ago, a different version of this backpack. It was the Z-Packs Arc Hall, or it might've been their Arc Blast, but it was made out of Dyneema. This is actually made out of Ultra, which is a totally different material. That backpack, the reason I switched to the Hyperlite in the first place, because that backpack had a squeaking problem. I think they've solved it with this one, and so pretty epic backpack. So this pack has a uh, back panel that holds it off of your back. That's why they call it the Arc, because it arcs and it stays off of your back. And I got the 70 liter version because it's so lightweight that I just thought the extra room would make a huge difference. The downside of this backpack is that you have to buy hip belt pockets for it. So that kind of stinks, but this is meant for the ultralight nerds out there. So you're gonna have to um, decide whether you wanna add an extra like two ounces for hip belt pockets, which you do because those are awesome. But the biggest downside of this backpack is the price. It's super expensive, but that doesn't matter because we're just talking about the best. And I honestly think that this has earned an award for the best backpack. Next category is best pack liner. <laughs> That's such a not cool category, but we're definitive folks, we're definitive. But it is going to be the Hyperlite Mountain Gear 70 liter pack liner. Love this thing, made out of Dyneema. Biggest drawback of this is that it is extremely expensive. I wanna say it's like 60, 70, maybe even $80 for this. So you do not need this. Don't go out and buy it. I just like it because I have it already and it is really, really good for what it can do. I would just say the real best is going to be a garbage bag. Just throw this inside of your pack. Some guys like to use a trash compactor bag, but that's about that for that category. All right, next category is the best sleeping bag. This is 
a very difficult one for me as well because I actually found a new sleeping bag this year that is fantastic. And I want to say it's the best. It's like a ultra close second, like almost a tie. First one is the Western Mountaineering Alpine Light. If you watch my channel, that should be no surprise to you. It is fantastically made, stitched amazingly, 950 plus down in it. They don't even list the down. They just say that it's at least 900, but there's probably uh, higher downfill feathers inside of it. And it's actually comfort rated to what it says. I also love the sleeping bag because it's roomy on the inside. You don't feel super constricted in it. So for that reason, it is the best. Now, the next sleeping bag is also the best <laughs> because I really couldn't decide and this sleeping bag is just so good. And the price alone makes it what I think is the best, like tied for the best. And that's the Cumulus Pan Yam 600 sleeping bag. When I got this thing back in October, it blew my mind. I was not expecting it to be as good as it is. It is almost as fantastic as the Western Mountaineering Alpine Light, but the only real difference is that the down feathers on the inside are a consistent 850, which isn't that big of a deal. It only adds like maybe an ounce and a half to two ounces more in weight. It's just as warm, just as roomy, just as meticulously made. It is a wonderful sleeping bag, and the price is almost half of the cost of the Alpine Light. Next category on the list is the best backcountry bed. If you watch my channel, you already know the answer to this one because I've really reviewed two this year. One I hated and one I loved. <laughs> we won't even list the one I hated. Should we, should we list it? Yeah, it was the Lost Ranger from Big Agnes. Total fail. <laughs> it's like worst ever. Best backcountry bed, like it's a sleep system that kind of feels like your bed at home. It's got a sheet, it's got a blanket that goes over you, it turns into sort of a quilt, it can kind of be used like a sleeping bag, it's got a pillow barn, like a real pillow barn to it, it's awesome. It's the Zen Bivy Light. I have the 10 degree version, that's the one I would recommend because it's actually comfort rated to like 25 degrees. 10 is like where you're gonna really start to feel cold. But this thing literally feels like you're sleeping in your bed at home. And when you get in that thing and you're in your tent, you almost forget that you're in your tent. So it gives you that really good sleep because you kind of feel like, well, you're in your bed at home. The downside to the backcountry bed <laughs> is that it is a little expensive at over $450. But if you wanna have amazing sleep, I highly encourage you to check out the Zen Bivy Light. Next category, best sleeping pad. I could not decide, again. <laughs> what was gonna be the best sleeping pad? I have a difficult time deciding. And if you watch my channel, you already know that. Uh, but this is between these two sleeping pads. We've got the uh, Big Agnes Rapide SL, and we also have the Thermarest Neoair X-Therm. Why couldn't I decide? Well, because I do winter camping, and this is also uh, a sleeping pad that I could use all year long at uh, 6.9 R value. That's still decently comfortable, and it only weighs 17 ounces. This one weighs in, I wanna say, around maybe 25, 26 ounces, so a little bit heavier, obviously. But this one has a 4.2 R value, so you would think, well, that's, great, well then why wouldn't you just use this one? Well, because this one is probably the most comfortable sleeping pad I've ever used. So pair this up with the Zen Bivy Light and you're like, never, <laughs> you won't even hike the next day. You're gonna be in your tent the entire next day. That's how comfortable this thing is. You're never gonna wanna get out of your tent. So because it sleeps so well, I love this thing. I wish this had a higher R value and weighed a little bit less because I would choose this one. Certainly, but these two pads are by far the best sleeping pads on the market in my opinion. Next category, best pillow. Do not click ahead because you don't know which pillow I'm gonna say, because it's not the same pillow. Surprised? Well, you should be. Although it is sort of the same pillow. Actually, it is the same pillow, but it's a different size because it is the Thermarest Cinch pillow. This is the medium size version, so I upgraded. So this is 18 by 14 inches. This is the one I had, so you can see the size difference of these two pillows. This one is 16 by 12 inches, so a little bit bigger, and it doesn't look like it's that much bigger. It is a little bit bigger. It's a little bit heavier, so almost like, I wanna say like four or five ounces heavier for this pillow. So like, you're thinking like overkill, but look at how, look at how plushy that is. The difference of sleep on this one versus this one, it made a difference, it really did. And so I've upgraded to this one. So now I'm only bringing one pillow with me, and I'm using my puffy jacket as sort of my side pillow, so yeah. New best pillow. Next up is the best backpacking quilt. This year, I decided to pick a new winner uh, from previous years, and I did a whole video on that quilt. It's the Outdoor Vitals Stormloft 
15 degree quilt. The biggest reason I liked this quilt wasn't because it was lighter than everybody else or just, uh, you know, uh, was comfort rated better than everybody else. It's because it, as a quilt, the biggest concern you have is when you roll over, you get cold drafts. Well, this quilt, for me at least, has never gotten a cold draft ever. For some reason, they've designed this thing so that when you roll over, it just doesn't come up on the sides. So for that reason, it instantly became the best because that's the biggest reason that a lot of people don't like quilts because there's a lot of cold drafts. It's a learned experience using a quilt. The only downside to this quilt is that it does have the strap in the middle kind of right up around your neck. It can drape on your face while you're sleeping, which is kind of annoying. But other than that, this thing is fantastic. It is uh, comfort rated to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I've had it down to about 19, 20 degrees and been totally fine in it. And so for that reason, it's the best for me for 2022, 2023. Next up is the best backpacking tent of the year. Okay, it's not the best backpacking tent. It's the best backpacking tents <laughs> because there are so many different types of tents on the market. I wanted to talk about uh, these ones especially. So the best trekking pole tents, there's three of them here. I've got two that are from the same manufacturer and these are Durston X-Mids. This one is the Durston X-Mid one person tent and this is the Durston X-Mid Pro. Both of these are unbelievably amazing tents. I made a video a couple months ago about this being the future of tents. I seriously think that is the case. How he's designed this thing is extraordinary and it is just an amazing tent. A super close runner up, possibly equal to these tents is this one here, which is the Z-Pax Duple XL. <laughs> <laughs> Dupla Duplex L. Worst name of 2022. Worst this is yeah, worst name of 2022. Duplex L, I think is how you're really supposed to pronounce it. Another amazing tent. This one's awesome because it has such amazing headroom and length for really tall people and it's just a good tent. It's a it's a classic tent for the past several years as the Zpax Duplex, but they've just done a few things to make it sort of XL, and for that reason, it's in the same category as these other tents here. I just couldn't decide. They're all so great. Now, as far as a freestanding tent goes for this year, my pick is the Sea to Summit Alto TR two-person tent. Such a great tent. Biggest reason is because the interior headroom is off the charts. This is like a luxury <laughs> like house. This is like taking a mansion out on trail. It's that good. It is heavier, but you're gonna get that when you buy sort of a luxurious tent in this type of a situation, especially since it's a double wall freestanding tent. So it's gonna be a little bit heavier, but such a great tent. And I also like that they make this so that it's in two separate packages here. So that way one person can carry the rain fly, another person can carry the actual tent and somebody else can carry the, you know, the poles or whatever, however you wanna do it. And you can kind of divide the weight between people sort of divide and conquer, but it's such a great tent easily, in my opinion, uh, one of the best freestanding tents of the year, probably the best freestanding tent of 2022. Then I threw this one in here because this thing has been such a good tent overall. I couldn't pass up telling you about this. Again, it's the Pre Outdoor Products Bryce One Person Tent. It's not as good as any of these tents, but it is the best buy for a tent. Under 150 bucks, under three pounds, fully freestanding tent. It's a one person tent, but it feels more like a one and a half person tent. Such a great tent. And we've had this on, I mean, how many backpacking trips? How many nights do you think you've slept in this tent? Probably 15, 20, maybe over 20 nights he slept in this tent. It comes on every single trip that we go on in every weather condition we've uh, been on for every trip, which is quite a few. So for that reason, this has been on the list as well. So best tents, in my opinion, of the year. Next category, best cook pot. The best cook pot, I have two of them because they're two different sizes. One is the Tokes 550 milliliter pot and the other one is the Tokes 750 milliliter pot. Literally the only difference is one is taller than the other. <laughs> so it fits more stuff in it. So if you're a super ultralight guy, the 550 is for you, has enough capacity where you can put two cups of water in it and that will uh, meet most ingredient requirements for the backpacking freeze-dried meals, and it also works as a great mug, and it will fit a small-sized gas canister right on the inside like that just perfectly, but the only problem with the stove is then you can't like put any type of stove inside of it other than the BRS stove, that really teeny tiny little uh, stove that's out there. And then I like this one because it has a little bit more capacity, which means that I can 
still cook my two cups of water for a uh, backpacking meal, but then I can have a little bit of uh, water left over if I want like a cup of coffee and it's already cooked. So that's kind of nice. I only need to boil once. And then I can still fit this all the way down on the bottom and then get like a normal size stove, like a canister stove to fit on top of this. So um, the price on these is also pretty awesome. You're right around 30, 35 bucks for both of these. And uh, they're titanium, so they're super ultra light. All right, next category is best backpacking stove. I understand a lot of you like your specific stoves. Some of you like your alcohol stoves. Some of you like uh, your canister stoves. Some of you like your jet boils, that kind of stuff. But I personally like canister stoves more than anything else. I just think for the ease of use, they are the best for what I like to do anyway. So I've got two of them here. <laughs> surprise, surprise, because <laughs> I couldn't decide. They're both so good. Uh, the first one is going to be, oh, we'll just do this one. The MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe. Such a great stove because uh, it's got a built-in igniter. It's pretty quiet for what it is. And uh, it's also uh, regulated for different temperatures. Packs down pretty decently small. And it's just solid as a rock and always lights up like on the first or second click of the igniter, which is really nice. So... Um, for that reason, I just love this stove. I think it's super great. The other stove is going to be the Soto Amicus stove, which might actually be a better option than this one for a couple different reasons. One, this is a little bit cheaper, it has all the same features, but it folds up and um, actually will fit much nicer inside of pots if you have a smaller pot. So that's really nice. The only downside to this one is that the um, distance between the pot and the little arms here for the pot holder is a little bit, uh, a little bit more than most uh, other stoves out there, so it might be not as efficient. We're talking like seconds in boil time. So for that reason, these two are my favorite stoves. These are the best stoves of 2022, 2023, moving into 2023. Next category, best spoon. I think this will be an easy one because it's a spoon. <laughs> it's gonna be the Ozark Trail spoon from Walmart. Uh, I love this thing because it is super cheap. It's like a dollar. It's flexible, super ultra light. If you lose it, it's no big deal. And uh, it's it's awesome because it's smooth. So like if you're eating things like cheese uh, that's been in your melted lasagna, it's gonna be not as sticky. <laughs> just a good spoon, just a good buy. And it's long handled spoon, so it gets in the bottom of those bags really easily as well. So that leads me to the next category, best freeze dried meals. In the past year, I was introduced to these guys, um, super small company, just two people working there overall. There's only one guy cooking all of the food as far as I am aware. Um, it is Pinnacle Foods out of Montana. These are legit the best tasting backpacking meals out there, like hands down. They've only got like maybe eight different recipes, which I wish they had more at this point, but that's okay because I don't mind eating them over and over. It may not even have eight. They may only have like six or something like that, but they're each amazing. The only downside to these though is that they are pretty expensive, but when you only got two guys working there and they're cooking like gourmet type meals for backpacking, it is gonna be a little bit more expensive. Best meals for backpackers in a bag, for sure. Next category is the best water carry system. Okay, some of you out there love your water bladders in the back of your backpack. I think you're insane. I think they're the worst ever because you can never clean them easily and they're impossible to fill. You have to like pull everything out of your backpack to fill them up. But you and your bite valve, you just can't get rid of it. Whatever, that's fine. You can do you. But I personally think the best way to carry water out there is actually two this year because one uh, was new to me this year and I think it's fantastic for specific purposes. But the good old smart water bottle. Tried and true, everybody loves them. They're just amazing. They're bulletproof. You can use the same water bottle for like a billion trips and it's gonna last you. So for that reason, I love the smart water bottle. It's just great. But also this year, it was new to me, was the Sea to Summit Water Cell ST water carry system. This specific one is a four liter bag. So if you are like walking in uh, an area where there's no water, like desert, you gotta carry a ton of water. This is a great way to do it. It's a super durable bag. You can strap it to the top of your backpack. You can put it on the inside of your backpack. Just a great bag. And it is nice because it almost like stands up on its own. Uh, so in other words, you can like, you don't have to worry about it sinking and flopping down and it's got nice handles on it. And for either side, it's also got a handle on the side here that you can pour easily. So great way to carry water. 
Highly recommend you guys check out the Sea to Summit Water Cell ST. All right, next up is the best headlamp. In my opinion, the best overall headlamp is gonna be the Spot R. It's a rechargeable headlamp. Love this headlamp for so many reasons. It's a super, super solid headlamp. So you can throw this up against a rock. It's not gonna go anywhere. But a close second, in my opinion, is going to be this one here. And it's the tried and true, the one that I am pretty positive I found back in the day. I'm gonna just take credit for finding this for everybody. Four or five years ago, I found this and started reaching out to YouTubers before I started a YouTube channel telling people about this thing. It is the Nightcore NU25 headlamp. This thing is ridiculously amazing. Almost as bomb proof as this one, but feels a little bit more cheaply made than this one. That's kind of why I like this one. This was just a little more durable to me but such a great headlamp. Both of these have their red lights, both of these have their flood lights, both of these have lockout functions, both of these are rechargeable, both of these are extremely bright. They're just both great headlamps. This one weighs way less than this one though. This one is like, I wanna say maybe less than half of the weight of this one, so that's really nice. But then Nightcore um, did come out with another headlamp, uh, which is the same headlamp as it's. It's the upgraded version of this headlamp. Um, I have not had a chance to use this one yet, so I can't really give you a lot of details on this one just yet. But just looking at them, uh, it's it seems like a pretty cool headlamp so far. So, uh, But that is to be told. And this is the ultralight version. They did also come out with, and I haven't even opened it up yet. <laughs> but there you can see it on the on the screen up there. It's uh, the, the headlamp is the normal headlamp. So it's like a half a headband with like a, a the thing attached to it there. I'm not really sure how much weight you're going to save with that. So, I don't know. If it's me, I'm buying this one for sure because I'm not a big fan of the little tiny shoelaces strapped around your head and then you get like shoelace marks on your head when you take it off. <laughs> Just know that you've got these ones. I haven't even tried them yet, but they're the upgraded version. So this one, best headlamps in my opinion for 2022, 2023. Next category is best flashlight. Are you like, Dan? You just talked about headlamps. What, what the heck? Why are you talking about flashlights? Well, because some guys don't like headlamps. They like flashlights. If you don't know this about me, I'm a, a big EDC guy, an everyday carry guy. I love to talk about and carry all kinds of cool stuff. And this is an item that I actually carry on my person. Emmett loves when I say on my person. <laughs> Every single day. It is the Olight Baton 3. I like this headlamp. <laughs> headlamp? It, it acts like a headlamp. That's why I like it. Because you can attach it to your hat like this and uh, kicks on. And it goes up to 1,200 lumens. Look at that. Look at how bright that is. IPX8 waterproof. Uh, battery lasts forever on this thing. I brought this to Africa and I also brought it on a ski trip for four days that I was just uh, on with my family and didn't recharge it the entire time. So that was 14 days. And in the winter time, you're gonna use this thing on a, uh, earlier in the day because the daylight hours are shorter. And I use this thing a ton. Plus I carry it in my pocket every single day. So I use this all the time. The battery lasts forever. Recharging system is a pretty unique on this one. So you can't like use your standard USB-C or USB cable to charge this thing. It's got a magnetic charging on the back of it. So you would have to bring an extra cable with you when you're backpacking. But honestly, I wouldn't even bring it because this thing will, will last you for a really long time. I wouldn't even worry about it losing a charge. So you can see here when you uh, want to charge it, all you do is like that. And there's a little light here that will tell you whether it's uh, fully charged or charging. And that's how you charge it. All right, the next category is best travel bags. You're like, this is a backpacking category? Yes, it is. It is a backpacking category because I backpack all over the country and I will tell you these are an absolute must. So sometimes I fly to a place, I have to stay in a hotel, then I go backpacking and then I go back to a hotel to get cleaned up and then I fly back home, that kind of thing. And you can't just take your backpack with you because then you have to bring all of your hotel stuff and your... Uh, like a change of clothes and stuff, and you're not going to pack that in your backpacking backpack, so you need a separate bag. You need a travel bag. So for that, the best travel backpack, in my opinion, is going to be the best travel bag, the Coda UL from Outdoor Vitals. Such a great bag because it opens up like an actual piece of luggage. It has so many pockets in it, and this does also act like a backpacking backpack because it does have a frame to it as well, and it does have a hip belt that's removable. So for those reasons, I love this bag has laptop sleeves in it, uh, places for cords and cables and everything else, everything you'd ever want out of a backpack, out of a travel bag, this is it for sure. And then the other bag that I absolutely love, and I'll be super brief on this, it's the Stagecoach from Big Agnes. I personally have the 85 liter bag. 
Um, it's what I put my backpacking backpack in uh, when I go backpacking. Next category is best footwear. Okay, this is a category that I've stayed away from for a very long time because footwear is super personal. So people like certain stuff and they don't like certain stuff. Like some guys are boot guys and some guys are trail runner guys. So it's just a very controversial uh, topic overall. I particularly like trail runners and think that trail runners are the way to go. And I've been using the ultra brand trail runners for a very long time. However, in recent months, this past year, I kind of feel like the quality has gone down quite a bit. Uh, the last two pairs that I've had have blown out really easily on the side. The rubber on the bottom, the sole was uh, coming apart. It was just a bad experience overall. They were wearing down super fast. So the tread I felt like was uh, wearing out way, way sooner than it should. So I switched to the Brooks Cascadia. I think these are the, yep, the 16s. And these things have been awesome. These particular ones are the waterproof shoes, which I actually don't mind a bit. Um, and I got the waterproof shoes because where we were going was going to be super, super wet. So I was just trying to uh, combat that a little bit. And a lot of people think that they don't dry out as easily. I don't find it a problem at all. I just take out the insoles and they dry out pretty quickly. But the grip on these things is fantastic. They're super lightweight. And the toe is also really, really wide. Not as wide as the Ultra, but they are wide enough. It's a wide toes bo toe box so I can actually spread out my toes in there. And so it's a similar feel to the Ultra. Now they're not zero drop, but that's not that big of a deal to me. I do like a zero drop, but the drop on here isn't super significant. But uh, if you're looking for a new trail runner, uh, I highly recommend you at least check these ones out. Now for around camp, you're gonna want something, right? Some of you out there are freaking out. You're like, Dan, why are you talking about camp shoes? Camp shoes are a terrible idea because it's just extra weight. I discovered camp shoes only this year and I love them because it is so nice to be able to take off your trail runners and walk around camp and enjoy letting your feet, letting your dogs bark, right? As uh, bark. as Kevin would say. But man, my dogs are barking. I found these at REI recently. Uh, these are the Zero Sandals. I'll put the exact version on screen which ones these are, but um, holy cow, these things are amazing it's almost like just a sole of a trail runner with a sandal strap on top and you would think these would be kind of flimsy or they wouldn't stay very well but these are almost like you could almost hike in these i wouldn't do that because i don't like rocks going down in between my feet in the sole of the shoe but these are solid on your feet so walking around camp isn't a big deal like if you got a uh, maybe do a river crossing or something like that. These aren't going to fall off of your feet or the current's not going to, uh, you know, wipe them off of your feet or something like that. And they got really good grip on them. So for a round camp, these things are amazing. Zero sandals. Okay, next category, best satellite communicator. In recent years, there have been a number of satellite communication companies come out from uh, Zolio to uh, Bivy Stick to uh, Spot. I mean, there's just so many. But my personal favorite is the one that I trust the most because mainly I trust it because it's the biggest company out there. And I don't wanna put my um, safety, I guess you would say, or the potential to call for help in the hands of a startup company. I'm just personally not willing to do that. And I did have a poor experience with one of those companies in the past and I don't wanna throw them under the bus, so I'm not gonna throw them out there. But I will say my favorite is certainly the Garmin, uh, it's the Garmin Mini. This is the Mini 2, so this is new this year. The biggest difference between the Mini 2 and the Mini 1 is that this one is USB-C and it's got a little bit longer battery life, which is really, really nice. The UI in here is also a little bit different. Now, I don't use a lot of the features that you can use on here, like tracking or navigation and that kind of stuff. I use this mainly to communicate back home. And then I use an app called Onyx Backcountry to be able to uh, navigate on trail, which is, in my opinion, by far the best navigation app out there for so many reasons. The downside to this, it's a little expensive, but if you go backpacking a lot, peace of mind for sure. SOS button is here to call for emergency services when you need it, uh, all in all, great device, has never, ever failed on me, not even once. Next on the list of categories is best puffy jacket. This year, I found a new one. And if you follow my channel, you'll already know what it is. Um, price is the only downside to this, but we are not considering price on this list. We're just considering what I think is the best 
backpacking gear. So it is the Montbell Plasma Alpine Puffy Jacket. I don't know if it's that, the name of it is that in that order, <laughs> but it's got all those words in the name. Alpine Plasma and Puffy, I'm sure is in there too. So this jacket weighs about as much as the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer, my previous favorite jacket but this one is much warmer. The loft on this thing is absolutely crazy how good the loft on this thing is. So you could almost use this as a four season backpack, backpack, <laughs> a four season puffy jacket. I would probably do that actually. If this is like the only jacket that you're gonna buy for the year, you could use this all year long and then just layer up pretty good underneath it. But this thing is fantastic for a full featured jacket. It weighs in, I wanna say right around nine ounces all in. Pockets, zips, uh, cinches, uh, cinches around the waist, super comfortable. Fits to size, so the large is actually a large and the small is actually a small, so you're not buying a large and then you're like, holy cow, I feel like I gained 50 pounds because it's too tight. And then you read it and it's like slim large. No, this actually fits you. Next category, best mid-layer. All right, the winner for me this year and previous years actually is the Outdoor Vitals Ventus hoodie. This three-quarter zip synthetic mid-layer is so good because it weighs right around seven ounces and is almost, and I do say almost, as warm as like wearing just the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer jacket or like a standard puffy backpacking jacket. Now it's not as warm, but if you're gonna go like two season or like fringe seasons, like summer, you know, early uh, fall or like late spring or something like that, it could potentially be the only jacket that you bring out there because it almost doubles as a jacket. It's so lightweight and because it's synthetic, you don't have to worry about it getting super wet and you know losing its loft or something like that. So great, great mid-layer. Next category is best rain jacket. Now this is a controversial topic as well because a lot of guys use rain jackets that double as hard shells, which I do too. Um, so if you're gonna be going in a little more rough environment, there is a rain jacket out there called the Frog Togs rain jacket. Costs like 15 to $20 and it's not super durable, but if you rip it, it's not that big of a deal and it works as a rain jacket and it's pretty lightweight. But if you want a rain jacket that is just gonna sit in your pack and uh, it's gonna last you years and it's really quality, uh, I would recommend the Rab Phantom rain jacket. So first off, look how small this is because this thing only weighs just over three ounces. I love this jacket because a rain jacket lives in your backpack like 95% of your trip. You hardly ever use it, obviously unless it's raining. So a lot of times it's just dead weight. So I like my rain jackets to be really, really, really lightweight. And this rain jacket has not failed on me. I have had other rain jackets that I've tested out this year that have failed on me, that wet it out. And this one has not. I've had this in torrential downpours. I've had it in many different conditions. Now, the only downside to this one is that it is like a half zip. So you're not gonna really get this over a really, really puffy layered system because it's gonna kind of compress it, although I have done that. So it doesn't work the greatest as a hard shell, but it will work fantastic as a rain jacket overall. Next category, best backpacking chair. This should come to no surprise to you. It's the best backpacking chair on the market, hands down. It is the Helinox Chair Zero, the one pound fully featured backpacking chair. Okay, the only downside to this chair, it's like 130 bucks if you buy it straight from Helinox, which is kind of ridiculous that you'd think you'd buy a backpacking chair for 130 bucks, but this company made taking backpacking chairs backpacking like Legit, before this, you would never think of taking a chair because they were way too heavy and guys would make fun of you. <laughs> now it's the other way around. Whenever I bring this backpacking and somebody else doesn't have a chair, people always wanna sit in my chair. Next category is the best way to carry food. Okay, depending on where you go, there are requirements for carrying food. Some places you're gonna be required to carry a bear canister. And I actually don't mind carrying a bear canister because it sort of doubles as a chair and they're not that bad to sit on. But if you're not having to like carry a, a required bear container for some reason, in my opinion, the best way to carry your food is gonna be in this. It's the Hilltop Pax food bag. The Dyneema bag, and that's pretty much what it is. It buttons here at the top, and then you can just roll it down, cinch it, and then you can hang it right here on this little red 
tab or just loop it around here on some bare line in a tree. It stays dry because it's made out of Dyneema, which is a, a very lightweight, strong, waterproof material. And depending on how many days you're gonna go for, you can choose the size from them. Next category, best ditty bag. We'll make this one quick. Same company, <laughs> same exact bag. But I do love their ditty bags because it's big enough that I can fit all kinds of ditties in here and be able to carry it waterproof as well. Almost waterproof, it's not seam sealed, but it's waterproof enough uh, if you're putting it in, especially inside of a, like a Dyneema or, or an ultra fabric bag. And uh, so I love their ditty bags. All right, next on the list is the uh, best med kit. Now this is also a super, <coughs> just dropped it. The, this is also a super touchy subject because a lot of guys are very particular about their med kits. I know I got you survivalists out there that will carry like a trauma kit and a crutch with you out there and probably a stretcher. You might even tie a doctor to your back. That's, that's, that's the type of person you are, which I do get. You wanna be prepared for all kinds of stuff. But if you're not um, educated with uh, medical stuff like that, if you do have a suture or a trauma kit or something like that, and you don't know how to use it, it's just dead weight. So I personally think that this one here, the Adventure Medical Kit 0.5, is the best overall med kit for the average person because it'll handle most uh, injuries that you'd get out on trail. And honestly, the most common injury that you're gonna get out there is a blister on your foot. Next category, best multi-tool. So I made a change this year uh, from the uh, Swiss Army Classic SD, which is a fantastic multi-tool for backpacking. But because I take uh, camera gear with me, my personal favorite is this one, and it's super tiny. <laughs> it's pretty much a full-featured multi-tool. It's the Leatherman Squirt PS4. Comes with knife, comes with a file, comes with uh, scissors, comes with a screwdriver, Phillips, and regular. I'm not sure why you'd need that unless you're carrying camera gear. But it also comes with pliers, which I think is awesome. So if you tie knots when you're out there, if you're like a knot tying person, I don't like knots personally. I like cords that have cinches on them and different things to tighten them up rather than knots. But if you do tie knots and you can't get it loose, great way to get uh, knots out. So for those reasons, and it's super lightweight, super lightweight. So. Great. Uh, I, they do come in other colors. They come in red and blue as well, which I recommend because if you do drop these, they're a lot easier to find than like a black one. Next category is the best trekking pole. I've got two of them here for you because they're both pretty awesome. One in my opinion is the best, but the other one is going to be pretty much just as good if you are looking for a trekking pole right now and you don't want to spend a ton of money. So the first one is my favorite. This is a Gossamer Gear LT5. Uh, I've had these trekking poles for, oh my gosh, two and a half, three years now. I did snap one uh, there, but it was easily replaceable. They're not cheap. They're about a hundred bucks per pole, which if you are looking for a high-end trekking pole, that's actually not a bad price, but these are super, super ultralight at around five ounces per pole. This is not cork. This is EVA foam. It does look like cork. It is not. And they are twist locks. And I do think that these are great twist locks because depending on how tight you tighten it, you definitely want to make sure it's pretty tight. They don't slip on you. So that's really nice. So uh, that is my favorite trekking pole for that reason. And then the next, which is also a great trekking pole that I found this year, is this one here. It's an Italian-made trekking pole from a company called Fizen. And they're saying that it's the world's lightest trekking pole, but that's because it's an aluminum trekking pole that's the world's lightest. I'm not exactly sure that it is the world's lightest, but it is stinking light at about the same weight as the Gossamer gear. This is uh, 158 grams according to the stamp on here. Also twist lock. EVA foam, uh, and these are only $70-ish, maybe 80 for the pair. If you're looking for a good trekking pole, ultra light, you might wanna check these out. And I do also like uh, these uh, twist locks because twist locks, when you're putting them in and out of like a water bottle pocket or something like that, they don't get caught on stuff, so that's nice. Next on the list is the best water filter. This may come to a, a, like a huge surprise to some of you, and I'm gonna explain why in just a second, why I've chosen this one. It is the Sawyer Squeeze water filter. Now, I know that on this channel, I've talked about the Katadyne Be Free for the past couple of years and why I think it's such a great water filter. And you're wondering, well, Dan, that one's still in the box. Why is that one still in the box? It's because I actually went online this week and bought this one myself. So I put out a video last week, which I highly encourage you to watch, about what Sawyer is doing around the world how they are literally saving lives and donating hundreds of thousands of water filters. And I saw it in person. Uh, so go check that video out. 
And every time you buy a Sawyer product, which is the reason this is still sitting in a box, because I felt compelled to buy a Sawyer product, 90% of the profits of whatever you bought goes to give clean uh, water to someone who doesn't have it. So they're given a water filter. So for that reason, I honestly think, and I am certainly going to be using this as my go-to number one water filter from now on, the Sawyer Squeeze for sure. Another way to filter water, if you have a failure on your filter, which they can fail, like if it freezes or it clogs up or something like that, is going to be these uh, germicidal tablets. And these ones just have to be potable aqua. You just throw a couple of these or one of these in a, a bottle, wait a few minutes until it kills everything inside of it, and then you can drink the water safely. Next category is the best way to inflate a pad. That one is going to be, no surprise, the Flex Tail Gear Tiny Pump X. But I do have big news, like huge news. They've upgraded their pumps. I don't have it yet because it's being sent to me. They emailed me this week. I've been talking about this pump for so long they finally reached out to me and told me they could give me a coupon code to help you buy this thing, which I thought was like, oh, that's awesome. People are just buying it, but sure, give me a coupon code. So you can get 15% off of this with the code Becker15. Yes, that's right. Click the link in the description below and you can get 15% off of the Flextail Gear Tiny Pump X. How cool is that? So this is a pump. It's also a lantern that goes up to 400 lumens. Double click it. And now it's an air pump that fills up most pads, comes with tons of different attachments. Uh, I like to hang this inside of a tent to give me a little bit ambient light, but in my opinion is by far the best way to fill up a pad instead of blowing it up with your own lungs. Okay, next on the list is the best way to track your bag. I told you this was a definitive list, right? Did I not? Like the definitive backpack? Like I tried to think of everything I could think of. All right, so if you're afraid of losing your backpack, uh, you're afraid of losing your luggage flying to go somewhere, you're afraid to lose your... A travel bag or whatever it is, maybe your keys. I have been using the Apple AirTags, and if you don't know about these yet, you should know about them. You throw these inside of a, a bag or luggage or whatever, and uh, you can track it on your phone. Super awesome. I love these things. So in my opinion, these are by far the best way to track your backpack. All right, last but not least, it is the last category on the list, and uh, it is a category that's going to be pretty niche to most of you out there. It is the best camera carry system. Now, why do I say it's the most niche? Well, obviously, if you're not carrying a camera, it's not going to be that big of a deal to you. But I carry a camera. And I know a lot of you guys out there like to carry cameras on trail. And a lot of you use, uh, and I have used, those clips that attach to the uh, strap on your backpack, like the Peak Design Clip or Polar Pro makes one. Um, and the Peak Design Clip is great, but it's too narrow. And so it doesn't fit a lot of uh, straps that are wider. And the Polar Pro one is horrendous. We've gone through multiple because the rubber on the back of it, right, just disintegrates after like two trips and they're super expensive. So do not go out and buy a Polar Pro one. They're total garbage. But I've been using lately the Hyperlite Camera Pod. So this is great because it is a Dyneema bag that straps right on the front of your backpack between the two straps or it straps right on your hip belt pocket, wherever you want with a uh, little carabiners and we lost one of the carabiners so we got a little rope here but it's a Dyneema bag that's padded and the, and then it'll fit a full-size DSLR depending on the size bag I think there might be different size bags that you could just throw right in there and zip up and then not have to worry about weather or throwing it inside of your backpack and somehow fitting it in there when the weather goes bad or anything like that and it doesn't necessarily fit a mic on here very well when you're trying to shove it in there, but you can get the Rode Micro to fit in here with the full-size DSLR camera, which I've done in the past, so that will fit in there if you're looking to carry like a big camera while you're out on trail. But in my opinion, this is the best way to carry a camera uh, out there. Emmett would probably disagree with you. He doesn't like it. Do you like this thing? I, my camera's always in my hand. His, yeah, that's true. He's a, He does, he, he backpacks with his camera in his hand. Like, so he doesn't even, he's always like, where's the next great shot, man? So, which is awesome, because he always does take great uh, video. But in my opinion, the best way to carry a camera out there is certainly this thing right here. All right, so do you agree with my list? Do you think it's uh, amazing, epic? Is it the best? Is it the worst? Are you? Is there anything on the list you're like, that is literally the worst thing I've ever used, Dan. It's failed on me multiple times. Let us know in the comments below. Or if you have something that you think is better, let us know in the comments below. Or if you're just like, Dan, that is the best list, and you're the best too, please tell me in the comments below. <laughs> All right, you guys, hope you like this video, and we'll see you on the next one.